the Ugly Truth coming to you live from Queen's Park. It's Wednesday, June the 15th, 2011. Uh, today we're out here for a rally and celebration in honor of children. Um, I believe this uh, rally was set up uh, by some uh, native uh, activists within the city and basically to raise awareness and show support uh, for children uh, who have been uh, taken by child care services and uh, who have either died under their care or suffered uh, extreme abuse and uh, trauma despite the fact that this uh, government uh, institution was set up supposedly to help children and to get them out of unstable homes and hopefully find them a, a stable place to grow up, a stable and safe place that doesn't seem to always be the case and I think uh, and I think that probably our First Nations people know this better than anybody else. So, so I'm here to show my support and uh, also to document the event. Let's take a look and see what's going on. My name is John Fox. I'm one of the organizers of this uh of this activity today. And we're gonna be briefing everybody uh, what's, what's going on this week or this year with regards to child welfare, the changes that's been happening. Uh, personally, I'm very happy that the Creator has bestowed upon us a beautiful day, a very beautiful day to, to have this uh, gathering. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be marching over to the uh, ministry office, which is over here about a block and a half. From there, we're going to the Toronto Catholic Children's Aid Society that we're not happy with the way that child welfare services is, uh, is how they handle our families. And uh, we're here to make uh, statements, and uh, we're, we're also doing this in a peaceful way, which we've always done. We've done uh, things in a peaceful manner, and we continue to believe in that. We're going to be having a power for the survivors and also the children. Looking forward to a good day. Give yourself a big round of applause for being here. Way to go, way to go. Okay, before we start, uh, our drums going to sing a song. We're very uh, blessed to have the, the guys here from Manitoulin Island. They drove between 8 to 10 hours to come here today. So we'll turn it over to uh, Chagizis, all the way from Shishiguaning, Manitoulin Island. supporters and all the people holding the signs and all the people that came a long ways for this gathering and I'm also very happy to have my son here today he's here in the crowd Joshua thank you for coming today to be with me my other two daughters are at school and uh, they're 13 and 16 my son is 20 my speech is titled, Assimilation Aftermath, The 60s Scoop Epic Journey Home. In the 1960s, the government continued its policy on the assimilation of Native children. That meant that at-risk children were scooped from seemingly dysfunctional homes, often without the slightest provocation, and put into foster care homes and adoption homes. Many of these children were adopted into Canadian middle-class white homes, 
Some were sent to the U.S. and some were sent overseas. In Canadian history, the government decided that we were an inferior race. They decided we Native children needed Christian religion. We needed to be like white people, to forget about our indigenous language, to forget about our cultural practices, to forget about our ancestors, to forget our close relationship with Mother Earth and all our sacred ceremonies. I was taken away from my birth mother for the reason she was too young and her single status was frowned upon. I grew up feeling ashamed of being Native because my adoptive parents said shameful things to me about Indians. I didn't want to be an Indian because I didn't want to be part of the stereotypes associated with Indian people. I tried to camouflage my Indian look by curling my hair, perming it, and staying out of the sun so that I wouldn't get dark. How ridiculous is that? Today, I believe I am a strong, beautiful Aboriginal woman. It took a long time for me to believe in myself again. It is a great honor for me to speak today because it's a part of my healing journey. It is a miracle that I am alive today. I grew up in a dysfunctional, violent, racist home who treated me like a slave. I ran away from home at the age of 11 and again at 16 to be free of the abuse. My highs of a happy reunion soon turned into grief. My family told me that my mother had been murdered. She is one of the 500 missing, missing and murdered women. I dedicate this speech to all the Native children from the past, from the present, and from the future. Thank you. Here's something for you to re remember that you're coming home. Uh, I would like to invite one of our uh, leaders, a man I respect very much, to come on up. And uh, he's been a strong advocate for our people in this area, across Ontario. And uh, that's our, uh, our uh, Deputy Grand Chief, Glenn Hare. Give a round of applause to Glenn Hare for all his hard work. Hello, everyone. Good morning, everybody. I've been here so many times, and I, each time I do, I, I always hope that the people inside this building behind me hear us. I always wish that they never touch any of our kids. Our kids, yes, they're precious. They're innocent. Not only Nishnabe, all, all our kids, everybody's kids. In, in fact, I, I believe there's a bill being talked about in this building behind me where, where there's Three, three areas of adoption. There's private, public, and international. And there's also a dollar figure per child. Example, if, if somebody from Germany adopts one of our kids, there's 20 to $40,000 that couple, that, that um, mother and dad can get. My God, our kids, are, are, they're human beings, they're lives, they're not, they're not cars, they're not things. Don't sell our kids. Don't sell anybody's kids. There's a lot of people, non-native people, have been saying, I've been listening to them in the, the 25 years I've been involved. It's about time Nishnabek should do something for themselves. Well, when we want to, buildings like this stop us. To get these guys, get these higher ups, Ottawa and here to hear us. We do, don't sell our kids. We do want to take care of our own kids. Give us that opportunity. We have everything else in our, in our community. We have education, we have social, we have administration, we got lawyers. Why can't we look after our own? But we can't quit and we won't. Miigwech.
You got a little bear. My good friend, Steve Gold. Come on up here. Want to hear what uh, Steve has to say? He, has, uh, he came a long ways to, to come and share with us. Let's give a round of applause to Steve Gold. He traveled all the way from Alberta. Dancer, bonjour. Ani, Steve Gold, that's Om Janang Otsinia. Steve Gold, Nitsika Soon. My name is Steve Gold, I'm from the Om Janang First Nation, and I'm a survivor of the 60s scoop. I'd like to thank John for inviting me here today. Through telling our stories together, we healed. We had been fostered all over the place. We had been adopted out into middle-class suburban houses, as I was. I grew up in suburbia. I don't tell any horror stories. I wasn't abused. I was raised well. I carry my dad's name, Alexander Walter Gold. Name me Stephen Gold, and I keep that name. But these stories need to be heard. Not just the stories that we need for healing. They need to be heard by other people. They need to be heard by the ministries. They need to be heard by the First Nations leadership. They need to be heard by the church groups. They need to be heard by the education people. And they need to be heard by health services. What was missing in our childhood? I saw a child carrying a sign here and it says, I'm a good person and a drummer. I was fortunate, I was raised in a home where I was told I was a good person, but I would never had an opportunity to become a drummer. I never had that opportunity. If you combine your responses to those two questions, what was missing in our childhoods when we were in the system, and then why are so many children entering the system today, you're going to, there's gonna be a flood of ideas. We have developed curriculum from the survivor's perspective that is being employed at the University of Calgary Masters of Social Work level that they must take in order to get a master's degree in social work there. They, they come and listen to the 60 scoop survivors. They have to take that course. So social workers coming out with their master's degree means they're going to be in administration, have to listen to us first. We're gonna have Marcia come on up here. She's one of our plaintiffs regarding the, our, our case, our class action lawsuit. So she's going to be talking, and uh, she drove all the way from Timmins, Timmins area, campus case. I see, I see many faces here. I see many young people. I see many children. I'm so happy to see them. I hear of survival. I, I understand survival is good, but there, there's life after survival. There's living, living a good life in the midst of survival that in that healing journey to be able to take the good things that we've learned through the years and share them with our children at, at the time that that healing journey is coming. To see that, that these young people know that they are sacred, that they can write, I am, I am special, I am, I am me. To be able to say that, the children of the 60s group the majority of them didn't get to say that. They didn't get to live that. They got to know it, maybe, as adults, many, many years after. But as children, it is such a blessing. It is such a wonder. And, you know, and the Creator is so good to be able to have these young people here bringing us a hope that we can see, we can acknowledge them, and know that they actually are children here believe they are sacred. They know they are sacred. An agency, a government, they don't know that. They don't know that children are sacred. Obviously, what happened to them? Survival. Survival is good, but it's not enough. Living, living the good life the Creator intended it for us, for our children, that's, that's the goal. Miigwech. There you go. My father was taken as a young child from his folks, put in residential school, eventually was adopted out to a white family. And in a way, I'm glad he didn't uh, live long enough to hear Harper's phony apology for the residential school system. Native children are being taken from Native homes just because there's a likelihood, a possibility of alcoholism or drugs occurring. They're being taken from good native homes that demand that Harper's racism and the racism of this government end. They even passed hate law legislation, but it doesn't seem to apply to us. We have to demand fair treatment, you know. Oh.
marched uh, from Queens Park over to the Ministry of Children and Youth at uh, Bay and Wellesley, the government uh, agency responsible for uh, setting up children aid services and uh, for abducting all of these uh, native children from their homes and families. We're now at the uh, Children's Aid Society here and from here we'll be heading to Allen Garden for a powwow and feast and uh, to continue the celebrations and the rally. Very serious issue when it comes to